Hello, everybody. This is Coach Blue, assistant track and field coach. Today, I will be covering uh, how does voting affect racial equality? So let me move on to the next slide. Um, there it goes. Okay, so there are four major factors when it comes to systematic inequalities. First one is miseducation. Secondly, mass incarceration. Thirdly, police genocide. And last, access to wealth. Though there are many other different, you know, factors when it comes to inequality, um, these are some that I thought were important to go over. Miseducation being the first one. The K through 12 education system is set up to fail poor and minority communities because unfortunately it is still segregated through wealth. Because the school have, because some of these schools have less funding, they don't have the resources needed to improve uh, education in their communities compared to those in wealthy communities. Most schools are funded by the state but are regulated by the district administration. These are people that we vote in to create policies and regulation for our schools and our communities. So one of the biggest things that we can do to understand and to make change in the miseducation um, is to basically become more involved in the voting when it comes to the people that are on the board to make these calls in your district. Secondly, mass incarceration. So the 13th Amendment, the 13th Amendment got rid of slavery except for punishment by a crime. So when, 13, when the 13th Amendment was set in place, slavery was basically over. But it was one thing that was in that clause, it was except for if you were arrested or by a crime or convicted, then they can start doing it as punishment for a crime. So if you're in prison, basically you become a slave. In today's time, nearly 40% of the black population is incarcerated because laws and policies that are in place that affected these communities, especially during the 80s, during the crack epidemic, where a lot of black people were being arrested for crimes of addiction and, and sales. Um, and these are things that affected many minority communities because a lot of these people end up relying on these and becoming addicted to that. And this becomes an issue because if you got nearly 40% of your population in prison and you're trying to make an impact even with voting or anything, even in a community, it becomes hard because you're almost missing a half of your population to make these effects, to even grow any kind of equity or wealth or anything. Um, so things like that make it harder for us to grow. But with our help with voting and change and reform of uh, policies, we can work to defeat mass incarceration and actually, you know, get some of our life back. Next, police genocide. Um, this is something that has been going on for years. Uh, many police have been murdering and beating and, and many effects of police brutality has affected our community. Um, it was said that even before one of the first actual police forces was actually slave patrol. And in society today, it still continues as officers are literally getting away with murder. And this happens because of the policies that are in place in the police force. Things that I don't think a lot of people even think about when it comes to what's going on and how police implement or how board members implement policies that actually end up affecting communities in a whole different way more than other communities. So this is something just like the school board, police, the police board, they have a board that basically regulates policies, but it's kind of a different process. The process, many of the people that are on the board are appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the city council. And those are people who we vote in. So if you're voting for city council, uh, you kind of want to vote or try to vote if you want to make change, vote for someone who aligns with the policies and stuff that you would like um, to make a change when it comes to police genocide. This is something that affects you know, a lot of us and, and we see day to day um, 
different things that happened just this week, you know, another man was shot. He, he didn't die, unfortunately. Um, I mean, fortunately he didn't die. Um, but he also was shot and injured and paralyzed. And this is something that goes on all the time and it has to be stopped. It has to be a change. We have to get serious. We have to be passionate about what we're doing. And this is part of why we're, do we're doing these workshops. We want to make the change. We, we're tired of seeing these faces of young black people being murdered. And one of the things that how we're going to make this change to build equality is through voting. Next, but last but not least, um, access to wealth. So many of us know there's a big gap between wealth, between the black and white community, um, or even in general, uh, other different races, when it comes to black people, they're on the lowest total pole. pole. Um, to start off this, I will say, America was built on African-American slavery. In return, slaves got nothing. They were stripped from their families, stripped of their language, raped, murdered, abused. And even after slavery, there was no recovery set in place for them to prosper. Many black people didn't get a fair chance for equality. But some others may have had some kind of infrastructure that may help them that we believe that could have helped us also. Um, many other communities like the Native Americans, Jewish community, Jap Japanese Americans, were all given some form of reparations from the tragedies they face. But until this day, black Americans still struggle to get home loans, business loans, to build equity in their communities. Because of things like redlining and racial biases, we have to work to reform and bring out new policies to alleviate this. And this comes from our vote. When it comes to, like I said before, and everything else, our vote counts, it matters. Because these policies are not things that we may feel like they're getting in place uh, or like being implemented without us knowing, but these things are going on. I think it's just the culture of us not knowing, especially young, uh, young people. You know, one of the most important things, uh, I'll move on to the next subject, but one of the most important things that I'll say, this will be actually my first time actually voting. Um, and I'm 27 years old. And one of the biggest things that the reason why is because it was never in my culture to never where I grew up, was it important to vote to us? You know, I would see things around, but I never understood it. You know, my parents never talked about you need to vote. You know, the only people I actually knew who voted was probably uh, my grandparents, you know, because I think people that are older kind of understand the gist of it because they've been through certain stuff and, and you know, and the, and the upbringing was completely different. But a lot of us don't really, you know, understand the importance. And I hope that with this workshop that you guys really understand the importance of your voice, of your duty, and that your vote really counts. And a lot of this stuff is allowed to happen because of policies and laws that are implemented and it's our choice and it is our duty to try to remove these policies and make better ones that way we can have equality for all thank you guys for your time see y'all